Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so we are finally here. This is the best sharpening, best sharpening. Uh, this is the best sharpening whetstone series. And today we are gonna talk about the medium 1000 grit sharpening whetstones. Um, I have always maintained that if you're gonna get a sharpening stone, you wanna pick a good sharpening stone in the 1000 grit range. It's also the range that most manufacturers will target. So every sharpening whetstone manufacturer will make a 1000 grit whetstone. And so that tends to give you the most options of stones. This is a stone by Whetstone Cullery. There's also another stone called Sharp Pebble on Amazon. Um, it's a 400 grit and a 1000 grit stone. It's a really nice stone that you can get for, I think, I've seen them for as low as $12 up to $22. So hopefully by the time you guys see this video, it's somewhere under $20. For under 20 bucks, it's a very good stone. It's a soaking stone, it takes up a lot of water. And it's a great stone for beginners, for those who are on a budget and don't want to spend a lot of money, and or, or for those who are just getting into sharpening and you don't want to spend a lot of money not knowing if you're going to spend uh, more time sharpening your knives or not knowing if you will stick with hand sharpening long term. It's a great stone to start off with. It wears a little bit faster than the average 1000 grit stone, but that, given that this is a very budget stone, it doesn't bother me at all. So I'll link either this stone or the sharp pebble. They are the exact same stones. I actually have the sharp pebble sitting off of my shelf somewhere over there in the giveaway pile. Uh, yeah, and I'll be giving this stone away too, by the way. This is the King 1000, 6000, but I'm gonna talk about the 1000 side. The King 1000 Deluxe is one of the best stones you can get for your dollar, period. You can find them ranging from 20, let's say 22, $23 up to $35. Um, I've seen them as high as 35. Uh, but for a knife under 62 Rockwell, it is the best stone you can get. Very organic feeling. It's a soaking stone. Um, I have found that most of my knives will develop a burr on the King 1000 between three and four passes, which overall is very acceptable for a 1000 grit whetstone. At the 20 to $30 range, it's probably the best performing stone for your dollar in terms of overall speed, feedback, um, and wear. The King 1000 will last you, I would say, at least five to 10 years of you know, average sharpening. If you have a knife that is closer to 62 Rockwell or higher, it'll wear the stone down a lot faster than that. Next, we have the Shapton Pro 1000. The Shapton Pro 1000 is a very good stone for your money. Uh, price range on the stone is between $30 and $45 or so. And overall, a very good stone, very slow wearing, very flat out of the box. Uh, the only negative I have to say about this stone here is that it tends to feel more like a 700 to 800 grit whetstone, even though it's advertised at the 1000. Woodworkers tend to love them because they are very affordable and because they are very flat out of the box, you don't need to flatten these at all. And so people who do a lot of chisels and do a lot of plain tools, uh, they tend to love Shapton Pros for that, uh, for that very reason. And the next one we have here is the Shapton Glass 1000. They're not always the fastest cutting stones, but they certainly are very slow wearing and very flat. It does not require any flattening out of the box. And it just has a really nice, uh, you know, luxurious feel to it. Every pitch of angle you change on your wrist, you can feel on this stone. The highest Rockwall knife I've sharpened on the Shopton is a 65 Rockwall of the Half 40 by Jihei. Um, it took about three passes on each side to develop a burr, which is very acceptable for a knife that is heat treated to a 65. But overall though, I really enjoy the 1000 grit stone of the Shopping Glass lineup. Uh, this here is the Kramer 1000, and again, it is made by Naniwa, according to uh, many sources, it's using the Chosera lineup. If I had to choose between this and the Chosera 1000, it has a slightly better feel than the Chosera 1000. Feedback is roughly the same on both stones. I think this is slightly denser if I had to pick a winner between the two stones. In terms of enjoyment during sharpening, I find that this stone gives me a slightly more pleasurable feel than the Chosera or the Professional 1000. Other positive is that it comes with a kit, so you can buy the 400, the 1000, and 5000 with a sharpening base all in one kit for about $300. Um, for a whetstone kit, that's actually not a bad price for a complete kit, so three stones plus a bridge and a cleaning stone as well. So overall, if you wanna get the $300 kit uh, by Kramer or Kramer by his willing, <laughs> It's actually a pretty decent kit, I can recommend it. All right, so this here is the Naniwa Diamond 1000. And uh, overall, I really like this stone. It's very fast cutting and very positive. This is a very interesting stone because the entire surface is impregnated with diamonds. It has a very snappy feel to it, but even though it's very snappy, it's also very dense. 
Um, typically, when you have a very dense stone, it kind of deadens the feel a little bit, almost like if you're trying to sharpen a marble, for example, you really can't feel anything. But this stone here, they've done a really good job mixing diamonds and other sharpening abrasions. And so you actually feel like you're sharpening on a nice, really high quality whetstone, uh, but you have to remember that there's only one millimeter of sharpening space on the stone. And that can kind of scare you a little bit, especially for those who are sharpening Yanagi buzz and you know, single plane tools. And you need to make sure that you're not, your uh, stones are perfectly flat in between sharpenings. And so, you know, with that in mind, I think that this stone here is great for some uses, not for everyone. For those who need to flatten their stones very often, I don't think this would be the right option for that, just because there is so little, so little room to work with. Um, even though you know diamond flatteners can take off you know a few microns of uh, of material per 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 flattening, it's just it's more of a mental thing than anything else. Technically, it's actually made for knives with a very high rock ball. They don't really tell you what that number is, but unless you have a knife that is at least heat treated from a 65 and above, I don't recommend this stone because if you have a rock ball, uh, if you have a knife that is heat treated at a rock ball 63 or even up to 65. The Chorceras and the Chapter Glass can handle those knives easily, but at the 62, at the 63 Rockwall range, they really are going to be neck and neck. I don't find that these stones are any faster when you're sharpening knives at that level. So this here is the Naniwa Superstone 1000. Very slow. I don't recommend it, especially at the you know 40 to 50 dollar price. There are other stones here that can do the exact same thing much faster, much better. So Naniwa Superstone 1000, I don't recommend. So Naniwa Chorsera 1000, uh, oh, this is the professional 1000. Chorsera, again, same stone, just it'll have a base with it, but Naniwa Professional 1000, very nice stone. Overall, you're not gonna have any problems with this stone. It can sharpen knives up to 66 Rockwell is what I've tested it at. And I've heard people saying that it can actually sharpen knives even higher than that. Um, I don't have a knife over 66, so when I do, I will verify that for you. It's very well respected and a favorite by many people who are getting into knife sharpening. I've used this side by side with the Chorsera 800. Um, I will have to say that Chorsera 800 to me is the better stone. It's faster cutting, it's a little bit coarser, so if you guys don't have plans to go to a higher polishing stone, you're probably better off with the 1000 versus the Tracera 800. It's snappy enough to let you know what your knife is doing, but not so snappy that you can feel intimidated by the stone or you feel like it's taking off too much material. The 800 grit stone takes off a bit more material, a little bit faster. So to me, that's, that's a really good thing for a 1000 grit stone. But for most people who are getting into hand sharpening, this is one of those stones that everyone talks about and that everyone recommends because it's all around good performer. There are no negatives about the stone. The only thing negative I can say um, is really the price. I mean, the price of these stones are in the $70, $80 range. And so for most people, that's a lot of money, especially if you're only buying your very first Japanese knife and it costs you $150. It's really hard for me to recommend a stone that costs half or more than half the price of your knife, of your first high quality Japanese knife. All right, so the next three stones we've got here are from Suhiro and they are, They've kind of become my go-to stones at this point for the 1000 grit. And uh, let's start off with this stone here. This one here is the Cerax 1000. Um, I've owned this stone now for three years and I've loved it. It's, it's been a really fantastic stone. And so here it does a really nice thing where their stones are always a little bit thicker and bigger than the average manufacturer. I personally really appreciate that. Uh, this is a soaking stone, so as a soaking stone, you tend to get a slightly better feedback than most splashing goes. This was almost the stone of the year at one point, at least in the sharpening category, if it wasn't for the Chorsera 800. The Chorsera 800 is slightly faster, slightly snappier, and the reason why this was one of my best picks is because even though it is only in the $40 to $50 range, it can handle knives in the up to 66 Rockwell easily, and so that to me is one of the most impressive things about this stone. Uh, this is the Tsukiro Debato LD. So the next two stones are gonna be kind of confusing between their names. This is the Debato LD 101, and then the next stone is called the MD 100. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll explain what that means in just a little bit. Okay, so the LD, the Debato LD is Tsuhiro's lineup of Splash and Ghost. This stone here was specifically designed and formulated to go against the Chorsera or the professional stones. Have they done a good job? In one word, yes. They have done a very good job making a very high quality splash and go. Now, 
as they splash and go, again, they tend to be slower than your soaking stones. And this feels very similar to the Cerax 1000. The stone on my right is the Cerax. This is the Debato LD. And they are identical in terms of overall size and thickness as well, which is a very good thing. Now, the thing about this stone here is that it costs, I think, about $15 or $20 more than the Cerax. So why would you buy this over the Cerax if they do the exact same thing? They feel virtually identical when sharpening your knives. They wear about the same, but the only difference is this is a splash and go and the Cerax is a soaking stone. The Cerax is actually slightly faster than the Debato stone. If you were to remove your slur while you're sharpening between every pass, you'll find that the Cerax will develop a burr about one pass faster than the Debato stone. Is it worth your money, extra money, to buy a stone that is a splash and go? Um, right now in my life, I don't have a lot of time to soak my stones, to wait 30, 40 minutes and then go sharpen it. Uh, the Cerax has an optimal soaking time of about 30 to 40 minutes. Anything above that, it's gonna be just too much. And anything below that, it just doesn't have that same feel if you were to soak it at 30, 40 minutes. And so if you don't have that time to kind of time between sharpening, then yes, the extra 10, $15 is worth it to buy the Debato stone. The Debato LD 101 is essentially the Cerax 1000 in a splash and go package. Uh, so this also here is another Suhiro Debato. Now this stock number is MD100. Um, I tried looking for different reviews and different information on these two stones. What is the difference between the MD and the LD? And the only thing that I can come across uh, is Suhiro's actual website and they really don't tell you much difference between the two stones. But so I'll tell you what my experience is. Between the two stones, the only difference is size. The LD is smaller. So this is the LD 101 and the MD 100. You can see here that the MD is much larger. We're probably talking about 50% or at least 40% larger uh, overall than the actual LD. Although I think this should have been called the LD and this should have called the MD or easier just call this the L and call this the M. <laughs> uh, I've always maintained that Suhiro has the absolute worst naming of their West stones and this proves it, right? <laughs> this is a fantastic stone. The very large stone here gives you a lot of real estate to move your knife around. Very good tactile feedback and just a very pleasurable stone to sharpen on and uh, the largest 1000 grit stone you can find in any brand. So literally using these side by side, they are the same stones. They feel exactly the same, except the MD is a bigger stone than the LD. I don't think it's really fair to say this one whetstone will be the best stone overall. Um, I'll give you the best whetstone under 20, uh, best whetstone from 20 to 30, best soaking stone, best splash and go. I think that is a much more fairer way of doing this. But if you want a best whetstone from 10 to $20, the Western Cutlery is going to be that stone. Uh, Western Cutlery or the Sharp Pebble 400 1000 is the best stone. It's uh, very affordable. It will do its job really well. And I have no complaints there. It just wears a little bit faster than ideal, but it's fine. Uh, if you want the best whetstone in the $20, $30 range, the King 1000 Deluxe is going to be that stone. It can handle most knives up to 62 Rockwell, and it's a stone that can do pretty much anything that these stones can do. As long as your knife is under 62 Rockwell, the King 1000 Deluxe will handle it just as well. If you had one stone to buy and you only had 40 to $50 and you don't mind that this is a soaking stone, the Cerex 1000 is the best way to go. It's a perfect wet stone for anyone who's getting into hand sharpening and can grow with you for as long as you want to. I've been sharpening on this stone now for three years and I still love it and I've never felt that I've outgrown this stone at all. Between the Kramer and the Shepton Glass, I think the Shepton Glass is a slightly better stone, has a slightly more refined feel, and it just has a more pleasurable you know, experience sharpening on it. And also is slightly less expensive than the Kramer Stone. So, you know, all those things kind of add up. And I prefer this over the Chorsera 1000 because I don't flatten my stones very often. And also technically the Chorsera or the Professional 1000 is the same as the Kramer by Zwilling 1000. So two, these two stones kind of fall into the same bracket in terms of price and performance. And so I feel like the Shapton Glass outperforms both of these stones here. So if you want a 1000 grit soaking stone, I think the Cerex 1000 is the best stone. If you want a splash and go, it's between the LD 101 and the Shapton Glass 1000. 
I think I've got too many whetstones and I think I need to dwindle down my collection and uh, to my top picks and so I should be doing a giveaway of whetstones pretty soon so if you guys want a whetstone uh, make sure you guys are subscribed uh, because there are going to be some sick whetstones that I'm going to be giving away and I mean sick in a very good way or dope dope whetstones um, probably half of what you guys see here today may be going out the door at some point